I'm talking about a contagious spirit, something that can haunt you in your sleep. It can, it can haunt you in the bus. It can, it can provoke something on the inside. And he prophesied from morning until evening. We, 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 we want to ask God bring those days back again bring those days back again wherein men will drink the wine that is wine indeed this is no longer among men then that book remains so for eternity the book of Exodus reveals a people that have been de delivered by an irreversible one the book of Leviticus Reveals the basis of their fellowship by the blood and the work of holiness by the cross. I need to explain that also. Because we need to carry along all the very pillars of the doctrines of the New Testament as we join it tonight. Because there's a great light that God will have us see and God will have us enter into. Hallelujah. This ignorance will be banished in our day. Because light will be so brilliant and none among God's people will walk in darkness. Hallelujah. For 10 years, ignorance and manipulation reigned in the body of Christ and people, people didn't want people to go into spiritual maturity just because of what they were getting from the people's ignorance. But anytime there's a shift in the spirit, even the devil does not know the dimension in which God is going to be made manifest. He always prepares before seasons come. He puts some people in the cave so that when the day breaks, they'll be able to arise. And the temple and temper or the operation of God is going to experience a great things because a season has broken up upon us. The Bible begins to make us to understand that the new and the living way of fellowship with God, you don't come to God's presence because of something you did good. Neither are you denied from His presence because you did something wrong. But the one and the only approved way of accessing the light that no man can approach unto becomes and remains forever the ticket of the blood. And that's why the Bible says having this confidence to come before the presence of God by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. It still remains the basis of our fellowship with God. Because when you come by the blood, God does not look at you from the standpoint of your disqualification but he looks at you as someone that is working from the standpoint of the reality of substitution and he sees you in the likeness of his son Jesus Christ in perfect righteousness hallelujah because your good works cannot qualify you or guarantee you access to God's presence and so in the book of Leviticus our work of holiness is is ex our, our fellowship with God is x-rayed by the blood. If you check the first, second, third, fourth and fifth pages of the book of Leviticus, you are going to see five offerings that the people of God were commanded to offer to God. Each one of them has a great sig significance and has New Testament affiliation. The first among uh, the five offerings that you will see, two of them are, are compulsory. And, and three of them are voluntary. But if you get to offer them, it opens you up to dimensions of grace and blessings, which you cannot get any other way. And that's why the book of Leviticus is an archive. If, if, if You can do many things without knowledge, but there's something you cannot do without knowledge. You must operate in precision and in accuracy. And that is the work of the priest. The priest must understand the implication of every sacrifice that is offered. He must know how to appease the God of heaven. To create a ripple effect upon the face of the earth. Samuel was a prophet. He was a king and he had the anointing of a priest. And in dry season, he knew the sacrifice to offer. To rend the heavens. And rain came down. Two rainmakers were mentioned in scripture. That could call rain from afar. And make it fall even when it's not the time. The name of Samuel is one of them. And the great man Elijah. The new how, hallelujah. <laughs> you know, we went for a burial, and uh, some people came and said we should give them money. That they understand the way the skies, they, they are the king of the skies. They can bring rain in dry season. 
If you want your burial to go well, pay us money. We'll... But we don't need a rainmaker if Elijah is there. He was the one that boasted and said, if I be a man of God. I pray that that kind of authority will come back into the ethic. You know, even an occultist will acknowledge such a man. God will give us the grace to know through power. Through power. Five sacrifices mentioned. The sin offering. I don't need to press on the sin offering because you know it. The trespass offering. That talks about repentance. And as we begin to walk the path of the kingdom, many times there be that you have to repent and change your own perspective when you come in contact with kingdom perspective. And that's why the cry, the clarion call that was made in the book of Matthew when John came upon the scene and began to preach was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. If you are doing business with the kingdom of heaven and you see the perspective of the kingdom of heaven, many a times you will be under compulsion to repent because your perspective is contrary to the perspective of the kingdom of heaven and if you are going to advance in that kingdom of necessity, you must have to sacrifice. You will repent. Trespass offering so that you can align with God. Hallelujah. I remember there was a friend of mine and he was in love with a damsel. You know, in Lagos those days, we had a, a transportation system. Moloe, Moloe. Oh, Jesus. 9 11 was converted to a bus. 9 11. If you are not strong, don't stay in Lagos. If you are not strong. Hallelujah. Even the best among his princes. If the prince of Lagos eh, puts you in that traffic for five hours and six hours back home, even the best among the princes might be changed to a marketer. Marketer. Regalvanized, recalibrated. God bless Lagos in Jesus' name. He was in Mount Lower when he opened his Bible for devotion. Because his morning devotion had to be in Mount Lower. That's the only way he could go on. And he opened the scripture and God spoke to him sharply. Well, I think it's, it, it, it was a scripture. When the Bible, when John the Baptist was prophesying to Herod and said, You cannot have your brother Philip's wife. That was the scripture that leaped out of the pages of the Bible. Hallelujah. And glued to his heart concerning the lady he wanted to marry. Unknown to him, the lady was pregnant for Philip. Another Philip that he did not know. <laughs> the kingdom has brought his perspective. And he was under compulsion to either repent either change his perspective and accept the kingdom order or to there's always a challenge and the trespass offering must be offered and every time you offer a trespass offering you must have to let go something to die so that you can align with the agenda of God it's in this that boys are separated from men it's in this that princes are separated from charlatans it's in this that strong men of God are separated for people that are just passerby. Hallelujah. And after the trespass offering, we have the burnt offering. And the New Testament perspective of the burnt offering is the book of Romans chapter 12. Where Paul began to beseech us, revealing to us that the burnt offering was not compulsory. It was voluntary. Are you with me? I beseech you, brethren, by the message of God, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for this is your reasonable act to worship. And be not conformed to this world, but be thou transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. 
And we must understand that the cross is central to the work that God does upon the face of the earth. And the cross stands to be ever the great divide between the old and the new creation. If you are going to cross from the old creation to the new creation, the only approved passage is where? The cross. It brings an end to everything that the old creation had celebrated. And so that the new creation that is powered by the resurrection would take effect. That was what Jesus meant when he said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. There is a power that drives the new creation. That is what we call the resurrection power. That Paul was speaking in the scriptures and said he wanted to know that power in his fullness and his dimensions. Are, are you still with me? Hallelujah. That I may know him. And the fellowship of his sufferings. And that's the only pathway. In order for you to know him in this wise, you must sign. You must take a note that you want to be identified with his cause even if it will cost you some suffering, even if it will cost you some pressure. Every form of the preaching of Christianity that makes it look um, as if you will, um, <laughs> as if it is strange for contrary situations to find expression around your life. It's not from the Bible. Because you will not read too long before you encounter that reality. The situations around the life of the Christian and that of the unbeliever will not be different. The truth of the matter is that because of the operation of the power of resurrection inside of your spirit, that which has not come from eternity will not be able to put to death that which has come from eternity. The investment that you have received from God is strong enough to bring to death everything that does not come from his realm. That's the basis of our victory. Not that you'll be separated from uh, somebody help me say to your neighbor that eternal life or abundant life is not trouble free. Hallelujah. I know they, there will be no amen throughout this service. I, so I will not give you an opportunity to respond. No amen. For a long time now, amens have been scarce in meetings that we have gone to. No response. <laughs> no response. Hallelujah. Because we are not trying to get to your soul. To get you to be excited. We are trusting that God will find a navigation path to the very core of your being. And plant a viable seed that cannot die. That's how strong men in the kingdom are, are raised and formed. Uh, you know, the excitement will go down. Your happiness will be punctured by a disaster. But there was something that could not take away from Joseph, even though they took away his coat of many colors. It's only that which you have secured in the place of your connection, your hope in God. Nothing can take away that. Not wind from the external can steal that from you. And Paul was the one that said that in order for us to know the power of his resurrection, we must agree to identify with his suffering. This is a dynasty that if you don't share in the doom, you don't get to see the glory. And the Bible says, whom because of the glory that was set before him, he endured the cross. The pattern of your life will not be in this another different context. Because he was the one that uttered this part of salvation. He didn't exist before. And the pattern that he uttered becomes the pattern for all the pilgrims that would travel along that path having the burden of that destiny. Hallelujah. Great book, Leviticus. But the summary of that book is our basis of fellowship with God. Which we can see by the levels of sacrifices that God says we should offer. Bond offer. There were people that had a dream to be the greatest man in their village before they gave their life to Christ. That dream dies if you come into the kingdom and you want to prosper in the kingdom. Because the cross will raise it. You crystallize that ambition from by negotiating the flesh. I have good news for you. Before you showed up in the kingdom, your destiny was scripted out. And in the kingdom, you don't need to come with all your ideas. It will be extra baggage. And in this race, you are going to be hindered by the baggage. 
and so the cross helps you to put to death everything that was that 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 transited from the old creation trying to kumba your work in the new creation it, it blots it out and if you insist that you want to carry it god is a master planner he knows how to create and bring storms that will make you cry alas care it not that, that will perish and in the last strand of your being he will lead you all the same <laughs> hallelujah the, the truth is that uh, mm, some of us that God where we go to is not because we plan to get here but I know a hand that is stronger than the will of man he wants to bring us into fellowship with him in glory and the only way is that we have to identify with his suffering that's how princes are made you can stop a man of zeal but you cannot stop a man of destiny. If, if you hear... <laughs> mm, let me stop there. Let me stop there. Hallelujah. When we were on campus and we were leaving campus, a brother took off like a tornado and started a ministry. He had everything down. The administration was perfect. Oh my God, he had put things. He had told me the things, what would happen. He downloaded a, a picture from the internet and he said, this is how the corporate headquarters is going to look like. And this will happen eight years from now. Jesus. He had so much details about what he was called to do, but he only lasted for six months. Because the gate, gate of hell will be allowed to test it. And if it did not come from eternity, eternity can back it up. Before you know resurrection, there is a, a passage. It's an old passage. It has not been renovated for a long time. It's a rugged passage. It's called a cross. Hallelujah. And people are trying very hard to remove that from our gospel. And there are seven things in the Bible that if it's removed from the Bible, it's no longer Christianity. I have preached on that before. When we try to find out what makes the Bible different from any other religious book. It's not the similarities with the teachings of that book, but the differences that matters. And so you might be able to preach a, an, a Bible accredited someone from a Quran. But you'll not be touching core areas. You'll just be floating through the periphery. And you may make a complete sense and hold the crowd for one hour. Oh my God. You are... But it's the cross. That which cannot go to the cross and still stay alive does not have eternal life. And it's only him that had eternal life that could promise to give it. And there's no book anywhere. Even if they lied, nobody could even have the confidence to lie enough that he could offer eternal life. No one! I am the resurrection. I am the life. No man ever spoke like that. Only God can speak like that. He that cometh unto me, though he were dead, yet shall he live and he that liveth and believeth in me he shall never die no man those th those, uh, don't read it and think a man spoke it only God can speak like that and as he invites us to partake and to share of that realm that is sustained by resurrection power it, that is something that the devil can never study and understand that spirit that with Jesus Christ from the dead. He can't get to understand it. Because the Greek word used in that scripture. When the Bible said that he disarmed principalities and powers. And made an open show of them. Is aquidomai. It's a military term. Hallelujah. When a battle becomes so fierce. And the captain on the other side. Pulls his cloth and becomes naked. Drops his weapon. And he comes and lies prostrate before the captain on the side of the victors. First of all, he's disarmed. Second, he's put into an open shame. That he's being naked means even if we survive, we won't fight you again. Because we have known that this faith will not be far from us even in that time. Aque domai. Resurrection power. He may understand that you are a student of engineering. He may understand that you are a student of, of vet medicine. But there is something that he does not understand. He cannot understand. No form of investigation can give him that access. 
is resurrection and resurrection life. And that is what sustains the entire new creation. It hangs on the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And that's why Paul was crying in scripture. Bringing us to a point of understanding of the fact that is that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that dwells in us. He's telling you about resurrection. So in order for you to know Christ at the resurrection, you must explore the reality of what sits inside of you. Because there's a temptation for you to live like a carnal man and never get to tap the resources that are deep-seated on your inside. If you offer the bond offering, what is the consequences of offering the bond offering? The consequence is that everything that is offered to God totally like that, fire must come from heaven and consume it. That is a secret. When you are totally yielded to God, you will not look for the presence of God. The fire of God will burn in your heart every day. Every time you go back to the altar and withdraw the things you have offered, then you need to look for the presence of God because you will not be able to sense that presence around you. The consequence of offering a burnt offering where you decide to put your ambition aside to follow the destiny that you have in Christ and to lean on the grace of God to fulfill and to furnish it will always be that in your, in, in, on your altar, on your heart, there will be fire. You will be conscious of God's presence that as you are speaking now, as you open your mouth, he opened his mouth too. And anything you utter, you are speaking with divine potency. That will be something you will be conscious of. Because the fire on the inside has consumed the altar. You yourself have presented yourself as a sacrifice that is alive. But yet dead to these ambitions. And only alive unto God. Now all these things are displayed in types and shadows in the book of Leviticus. In all the offerings that were um, recommended that we should offer. Hallelujah. We need some ventilation. Give me volume on your keyboard. It's a place we are going to, a spiritual place. We are trying to put the bridge so that there will be connection. And when we get there, we'll stop talking. Hallelujah. So that God can minister to your spirit and furnish some things. Because this program, no matter how good it is, it will come to an end. But the spirit that enters you, Will walk with you forever. The Bible said that the Spirit entered me when He spoke to me. Because the service will end, but the Spirit that has entered you will go with you. And you will live with something from this house tonight that will abide with you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In a moment of time, I still want us to pray quickly and say, Lord, enlarge my capacity for the journey tonight. Enlarge my capacity. Do not come into this place casually. It doesn't take eternity for God to do something eternal. Enlarge me. Let there be a shift. A shift in my life. So Brahma has. That time has come and the clarity of your counsel might break upon the heart of your people so that your own can be separated. Lord in simple plain language speak to us tonight shabatomba skefrene monkope arana kapaya sendo la maskabre babala hasada let it be a time oh god that will come face to face with you We give you glory. 
We give you praise. We magnify you. We magnify you. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. The very power that upholds the heavens will bring you back today. Soremande, apremande, salemande, panda skavra nahabataya. Let something erupt in ABU campus. Something that nothing can stop. Raise unto yourself horns of salvation. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Jesus mighty name. The third offering spoken about in the book of you know we have sin offering, trespass offering, bond offering. We have peace offering and meat offering. Five of them. Sin offering compulsory, trespass offering compulsory and the rest of the offerings are voluntary. Hallelujah. In the book of Hebrews we see the peace offerings. Where the Bible talks about the fruit of our lips. Giving worship and praise to God from the depth of our being. Predicated upon the revelation of God's reality. And as we offer those offerings to God. The spirit of peace. He envelopes our very being. And in our soul every turbulent water is brought to a standstill. Because an offering that is pleasing to his sight an aroma that that he has received in heaven has ascended from your lips hallelujah let, let me stop there and so in the book of Le leviticus we see the basis of our fellowship by the blood and the work of holiness by the cross we need to understand the basis of the work of holiness as revealed in the New Testament. Simply put, the work of holiness in the life of a particular believer is the extent to which that believer has allowed the cross to reconfigure his life. For instance, if I give this brother a slap now, his flesh goes to work, his mind goes to work, and he quantifies the level of pain 5 kg, 2 kg the mind goes to work instantly and all this thing is happening without God and then a suggestion begins to pop up that if, if I got 5 kg I give 10 kg and all of this and this instruction that came to him came from the platform and the plane of the flesh Meanwhile, the perspective of the spirit is contrary to this deduction that the flesh has been able to ascertain. There's a challenge. If you are going to go ahead with the spirit, then you must of necessity have to cut off with the suggestions of the flesh. That is what the Bible calls bearing the cross. That you are carrying the cross with you. And every time the flesh comes to give you a suggestion, you blot it out with the cross. That is a more radical disposition than fighting for your right. You didn't hear me. I know you didn't hear me. <laughs> you, are, you are a more radical man if you can say no to the flesh than take placard to fight. Hallelujah. Please help me tell your neighbor. If your Christian life is accurate, you are expected to say more no's to yourself than to anybody else. Every time you sense the flesh rising up and it's true that you are still bearing the, cor the cross, you cancel out the suggestions of the flesh so that you can go along with the spirit. That's the work of holiness. 
if that happens consistently in your life, you begin to see that you are living out the very destiny of Christ as prompted by the Spirit. And more and more, the flesh is losing authority to gain dominion over you. You are making spiritual progress. You are on the path of spiritual progress and your, your spiritual adventure is a healthy one. I've seen several people that have not been able to go beyond a particular factor in their life because the flesh is so strong. The person can be nice today becomes a demon tomorrow. Be, be good today becomes darkness next tomorrow. When you see that person, the person is not bearing the cross. The person kept the cross at home and then is making the journey and trying to create his own Christian life based on how he feels. Such a man should not be trusted with money. Should not be trusted. Don't entrust your life to such a person. The, the flesh can move the person to kill you. Ah, I know what I said is not good. But I had to say it all the same. Hallelujah. If you, have, if you don't have that certificate, if the mark of the cross is not upon you, it's not safe. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, You are the enemy of the body. The story was told of a great soldier. This guy was caught, was taken from the streets. He was a street fighter. He could do, he was a god of himself. He could do anything he wanted to do. He could fight. He had so much strength. And then when they arrested him, arrested him so many times and jailed him. And when they release him, oh my God, he goes again. And so they said, okay, let's make this man help us. And they absorbed him into the army and gave him some training. And the first clarion call for battle that was made, they sent him to the war front to die. Hallelujah. Then they were approaching enemy territory. It was in the night time, about 7 p.m. And the evening was fading into the night. And when they waited for about two hours, lying in the grass. By 9 p.m. in the evening, this guy just removed his cigarette and he lit it to, you know, just cool off, you understand that? And then the enemy saw the edge of the light and enough battle fire hit the camp. Many of these soldiers in that platoon died just because of a man not under government. You get it? A man that is not, that is operating in the flesh is a threat to the body. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear. He said he should not be such a man should not be given the privilege to minister. Because even if the person is anointed and they know the person is a minister, the person's life will be a reproach to the gospel. God cannot trust that man. And so we should not. You should not also. If you want safe landing. Hallelujah. I know it's not sweet. Uh, it's not sweet. It's not sweet. But these were the things that were taken out of our gospel that the bastard generation arose. I attended Bible study in Lagos. And the topic was fasting and prayer. And then the coordinator of the Bible study now said, Should fasting and prayer be imposed on people? Then some of you now say no, it's something you need to be led by the Spirit of God to pick up a fast. Nobody will tell you to fast, you know, and all of that. And everybody went that way. And I said, is it that you need a scripture to show you that when you start fasting and prayer, first of all, they need to impose it on you. Mm. So that you can get, you can be disciplined in handling the flesh. The flesh is an enemy, it's terrible. It can destroy the destiny that you have been building for so many years destroy your marriage destroy everything you are looking forward to the flesh can allow you to get there and destroy it and you see everything coming and i showed them from the scripture in jonah's revival how that the king made a decree that nobody should eat even the cattle and the beasts of the field animals stopped and it was a proclamation it was imposed on them that i began to say you need to start there first before you enjoy the wonders of fasting and we can we can trust that you'll be able to fast without instruction at first we'll put you on that why flesh 
flesh. You don't get it. <laughs> I, I don't know no amen. I don't know how she say, hallelujah. No, hallelujah. Just be receiving it like that. It's the cough. It's not sweet, I know. Mm, it's affecting the cough of your being and ventilation is coming to your spirit and your spirit is okay. That one I'm sure of. Before we can know that you can fast on your own, they have imposed it on you many times. And then gradually, that which you have gained by discipline becomes a delight. And you know that it makes you access the mind of God easily because your flesh is starved and your spirit is stuffed. And then you learn you know how to mount up with wings into places that lions have not seen. Places that the vultures cannot behold. Oh, oh, God was the one that put a question to Job. He said, Have you seen the dwelling of light? That light has a place where it resides. <laughs> ah, <laughs> the dwelling of light. Somebody threatened me one day and said, Anytime you stand up to preach, to teach, you preach everything you know. The day we come, the revelation you preach, we finish. And surprisingly, that thing that entered my spirit, affected my spirit. I became fearful. I said, hey. <laughs> You know that? <laughs> it's true, this thing can finish. Hallelujah. And in order for God to deliver me, He took me in the Spirit to a place I saw many books. Not only books written in English, but other languages. And He, saw, he, he now revealed to me, He says, So is the depth of knowledge. It can never end. Oh my God. <laughs> There's a place, a land, the Bible says, where you eat bread without scarceness. Where you gather up gold like the stones of the brooks. There is a realm in God. Where even as much as you can take, the content is not yet depleted. But the flesh will want to bind you from seeing that reality. And you must be very hostile to it. It's when you have conquered it and you have brought it to a point of obedience. And you have subdued it. Then your spirit will be able to mount up without resistance. When last did you mount up? <laughs> like a flight. And you transverse the realm. And when you go like that, you come down with some things that you have never learned. You come down with the knowledge that you receive but you are not taught. Kind of knowledge that you cannot access in your school library. It's right there. But you need to mount up to get to the height where that reality resides. So all of that is extrayed in a type in the book of Leviticus. And in the book of Numbers, the people are arrayed for battle. Can you see the progression? These three things are written down here. The summary of Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. There's a scripture that summarizes all of that. And that is Psalms 1, verse 1. Turn your Bible with me. Tetabola natabasa. Ila breka fasa mantale bronda kabeda eskabala husa. Paile ne eskabrande makuria vazafata. Somebody came to me and he said his pastor said Jesus just appeared to him. I said, what did he say? Then he said this revelation, that revelation. This. Then I took him to the Bible. I said, I saw that revelation. Eh? In the Bible, many years ago. 
I found out that every spiritual encounter you have and every word of prophecy you receive, there is a scripture, all right, with which you can communicate it. I found out. Because everything that God does and reveals does not contradict the scripture. And in, in fact, God wants you first to see him in the scripture before you see him in a revelation. And that was what he was trying to illustrate when he met those disciples on the way to Emmaus. The Bible revealed that he kept him, him, himself from them that they could not discern him. And then he began to show them from the scriptures, reveal himself to them from the scriptures. Because he wants them to know him first from the scripture. He would have just come as light and said, I am Jesus. But he, he, he kept them from knowing him until they have seen him in the scriptures so that any revelation of him that they see will confirm what? The scripture. You are not with me. Then when they broke bread, he was made known to them. And when he vanished, the people testified did not our heart burn when he opened to us the script when last did your heart burn when last did a burning in the scripture the judgment in the scripture when last did he try your heart there is a part which no foul know it he said, the vulture's eyes have not seen. He said, the lion's webs have not trodden it. The fierce lions have not passed by it. He put his hands upon the rock. He overturned the mountains by the roots. He cut out rivers among the rocks, and his eyes see it every precious thing. He binded the floors from overflowing, and the thing that is hidden bringeth he forth to light. But where shall wisdom be found and where is a place of understanding all is not in the earth wisdom is not in the earth it's not a product of the exertion of the mind of man amen wisdom is christ are you with me have you heard preachers preach and say that wisdom is in the mind you have not heard that one? Exact the mind, exact the mind. Think. Put yourself on a mental diet. So it's occultic. If our minds have the, the capacity to direct our steps, the Bible will not say it. It's not given unto a man to direct his step. He won't say that. It will be wrong for us to quote the scripture that I will look unto the hills from whence cometh my help if our mind has the capacity. I need you to understand that your mind is falling. And it's only when your mind is made life by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that your thought can be brought into the thoughts of God. And that's why the destiny of any man in Christ is a destiny of utter dependence. Because God is all sufficient and you are obviously insufficient. If it takes you 40 days to pray and fast and find the next step, the way of wisdom is that fasting. Until your mind is made life. And then the spirit now drops his perspective. When you are through with your youth service or when you are doing the youth service, six months to the end of the service, begin to ask God what next. Because there's no encyclopedia you can, you, can, you can read. There's no book that you can stumble upon that can inform you about issues of direction. Where can wisdom be found? strange categories of creatures were mentioned. The foul that is so detailed in his search for the things in the earth. The lion's wells that can this nose that can smell any carcass that has died. The great lion, them, they don't need to wait for it to die. They kill it. They have not seen it. It's because it's not in the earth. May the Lord open unto us his good treasure. May the chambers of wisdom be let loose. May fear be banished that men might come into faith. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Numbers, we see that people, the people of God were arrayed for battle. Turn with me to the book of Leviticus quickly. Leviticus quickly. The last chapter of the book of Leviticus. Just in case you need some biblical references to support the things I've written on the board, if they are actually so in scripture. Are you there? The last chapter of the book of Leviticus. Let me add some scriptures here and there so that you get to know that I didn't just, it's not literature that we are doing. Can we read Numbers chapter 1? The Bible says, And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take ye the song of all the congregation of Israel. What is requesting for is a census. After their families, by the house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles. From 20 years old and upward, all that may be able to go forth for war in Israel. So, the numbering is arraying them for what? For battle. So, you have gotten that now? All right. I just want you to know that we are within biblical security. We are floating within biblical security. Amen? But I said you should open to the last book of Leviticus. Now, if this exactly is a sequence from Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, then I want to land here between Leviticus and what? Numbers. Let me land there. There's a vital thing that connects the book of Leviticus to the book of Numbers. I want, us to, I want us to isolate it and to see it. When we have seen it, then we can now apply it. The Holy Ghost helping us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Um, it's a long reading and I don't want to do the reading. You are going to do the reading when you get back home. From the book of Leviticus chapter number 27, which is the last chapter of the book of Leviticus as it opens up to the book of Numbers. There's a light there. Revelation there. A careful, careful reality is revealed in the book of Leviticus chapter 27. Amen. It has vital connection to Numbers chapter 1. So please, I would like us to look at it. Now, let me explain it. Later you can go and read it. Okay? Let me just explain it because of the time. It will take us reading out about 13 chapters. And the chapters will be reading are numerical chapters. We have numbers 20, 30, 10, 5, 4, 6. And even if we read it, your mind will not be able to retain it until we break it down and put it into figures. That's why I requested for this board. And thank God for the, um, for the computer writing of Brother Isaac. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Now, this is what is happening in Leviticus chapter 27. In Leviticus 27, a man brings an offering. He makes a vow. Okay? Just like when we come into the New Testament. And if your salvation is genuine, it should lead directly to consecration. Where you come to a point that because of that which God has done for you, not because of anything you did, just because of his great love that he has lavished upon you, you have decided that you want to live your life for him. That's consecration. That should be the natural result of salvation. There should be no salvation without consecration. Actually, in the days of the apostles, there was no salvation without consecration. But today, we have to separate clearly. Giving your life to Christ and then receiving Jesus as Lord. It didn't, that, that distinction did not exist that time. Because if you had given your life to Christ and your salvation was genuine, it should naturally result in what? Consecration. And that was why when Paul saw that the, Galatians, the Colossian Christians were genuine Christians, he began to pray for them that they be filled with all of the uh, knowledge of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Because he saw that their salvation was genuine and if they don't get to understand the full scope of God's eternal purpose, one trick star can come to town and give them another destiny. Do you understand that? That was why he prayed that prayer. Because he saw that after they gave their lives to Christ, 
it translated directly to consecrating to the will of God. Are you still with me now? And so, and that consecration is predicated on the fact that God has made an appearance as light to your spirit and you have received a revelation of God. That revelation should, is what makes you give your life to Christ in the first place. And it should follow with your consecrating to God. But nowadays, some people give their life to Christ for 10 years and after 12 years, they now begin to consider the risk of consecrating that the agenda will die in the process and that's why what we have as the manifestation of Christianity today is an aberration that needs inoculation from heaven. In, needs to be inoculated. Our prayers, our prayer points, the one we go to the mountain to pray, needs inoculation, needs treatment. The ambition, the desire of a young Christian boy now is that he wants to be <laughs> the greatest man is made. He is not part of the calling. Mm. Yes, they manifesto. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's outside the scope. He has a bogus vision that is anti-kingdom. That means he's preparing to use all his giftings, his prayer, and his spiritual resources at his disposal to advance a kingdom that is not God's own, and that's his vision in life. Because every true man that will matter in the kingdom must pass through a slim road that has not been renovated for a long time, the cross. And everything that ambition you had before, you will die to it. And friends, help me tell your neighbor there is no other way. <laughs> and say it laughing so that he will not be discouraged. <laughs> he will not be discouraged. I went for a prophetic conference and the teacher stood up. He was basking in the Holy Ghost. And preaching and preaching, talking about the technology of the spirit that the Holy Ghost is into this technology now and doing that now and doing that. and they set me up that day because I was invited all the way from Benue to Abuja. And after the guy finished talking about technology and technology, they now invited me to come. I say, because they wanted me to be on the hot spot. They wanted me because they knew that when the man was preaching, I was taking notes. And they knew that I was not in agreement with what he was saying. And I brought three factors. I said, sir, there's no process in this your sermon. Christianity without process. See, Jesus is not a money doubler. He doesn't give men false hope. There are several things that people prophesy on people that will only happen by process. Wake up and smell the coffee. He said, walk with God. Every man's heart will be tested. The reins of your heart will be tested. Your motives will be tested. God will judge your motives until a point comes when you, when you drop down and say, Care is not down that we perish. They say, I like you like this. It is when you have cracked like this that my spirit can flow through the cracks and the excellency of my glory can be made manifest. That the excellency is not in the vessel but in the treasure that is hid therein. Anytime you are strong, God is weak and you blot him out of business. Hallelujah. I know there will be no amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what is happening in the book of Leviticus chapter 27 is that somebody comes to God and he consecrates his life to God. Is that not the best thing that you expect? That, that's the most reasonable thing the Bible says that we can do in accordance with and in tandem with the extent of price that God had to pay to secure our redemption, the only reasonable thing that we can do is to respond by consecrating our lives. Oh, I like the story of Abraham that was told by Stephen in the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 7. He said, the Lord of glory appeared to our father in Mesopotamia. Every time God appears like that, it leads to consecration that was the basis of the first altar that Abraham read of it was an altar of consecration that means after encounter with God what should follow now if I if I, if we check and probe the lives of people seated here you are going to see that their agenda is still alive should I give you an equation a five-fold equation say God's man you didn't you are under are you threatened I'm saying repeat. God's man in God's place 
doing God's work in God's way and at God's time will not lack God's support. That's a five-fold five-fold puzzle for success in, in ministry. Because I've seen several people that want to do God's work in their own way. It means the cross has not touched that desire. God will not accept your sacrifice. Mm, God will kill that ambition and raise people that will kill it. Raise people that will kill the ambition and then when you lie down, say, I can't do anything against it. Now, if you pray, I will, conquer, I, will, I, will, I will answer. You receive a ministry after the cross, after you have submitted your agenda. Hmm. Long ago, the Lord spoke to me when I was serving in Kano. He spoke some things to me and then because he spoke it to me, I now rose up and I wanted to bring those things to pass and I failed. I, I, I wasn't bold enough to ask him why. Then I just kept quiet. And then when the time came for the thing to happen, he didn't even inform me a day before. He stumbled into, he just stumbled into my life. I said, awake, take your cloak. And he brought the thing to pass in his own way and in his own time. If you have a contribution to make to the fulfillment of your destiny by your own wisdom, that wisdom is the reason why that your sacrifice will not be accepted. Because the hands of man is in it. He doesn't carry the torch of immortality. Hallelujah. And I tell you, it's very radical for you to let your own will go so that the will of God will prosper. But I know no other place of true freedom. Freedom is not, is not freedom from. Freedom actually is bondage to God. That's when your soul becomes free. And through ventilation, waters it. And peace stabilizes it. There's no realm of existence that is higher than that. Now, so what is happening in the book of Leviticus chapter 27 is that one guy comes to God and offers himself as a sacrifice. Is that not a good thing? But the book of Leviticus is revealing to us that that sacrifice that is offered to God and any other sacrifice for that matter, when people come and consecrate themselves to God, each of us, as we consecrate ourselves to Him, it, it registers in the spirit as a unique value. No, uh, Lord, give me the words. Give me the words. Give me the words. All right, let me see. Let me, let me. So, Jangfa comes. I come. Benga comes. Uh, Pastor Elijah comes. And we all go to God and offer ourselves as a sacrifice. In the eyes of God, from the realm of the spirit and from the perspective of the sanctuary, there is a value, a numerical value that is placed on the worth of your sacrifice are you with me for him it may be five shekels for me it may be 10 shekels for him it may be 15 shekels for junk five maybe 20 shekels all forms of commitment to god registers as a definite figure did you get to that point that's what the book of leviticus is trying to illustrate to us and if you read it very critically from the book of leviticus chapter 27 verse 1 to 13 this is what you're going to get Don't lose sight of the revelation in numbers. Are you still with me? Hold that one in view on your left hand as we peruse through this on your right hand. I know I said it should open to Psalms 1. I'm just running for time. I'm running for time. I'll quote it and then I will show you how that all these I've written summarized in Psalms 1 and then was x-rayed in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, chapter 4 and chapter 6. You see, the Bible is not capable of private interpretation. It's an open book. Holy men of old, the Bible says they speak as they were carried by the Spirit. Different people spoke from the belly of one spirit. And so it cannot contradict itself, but it's not capable of private interpretation. If there is a truth in Genesis, it will glide down to the book of Revelation. Did you get it to that point? Now, so these guys came to God and gave themselves as an offering. You know what Psalms 1 now says now? Say, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of discomfort. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, that bringeth forth his foot in his season, 
his leaves also shall not wither and whatsoever he laid his hands upon to do he shall prosper and Psalms 1 now reveals to us the three dimensional portrait of a man that is called blessed by God's definition a blessed man by God's definition is blessed in his sitting in his standing and in his walking somebody says sitting standing and walking now as we go you'll find out that this exodus is talking about sitting leviticus is talking about standing and numbers talk, talks about walking but just stay tuned let's go to our chart because i need to open the book of oh okay okay all right let me show you now can you turn with me to the book of uh, ephesians chapter 2 let's begin the journey let the revelation of your light of your wisdom break over this house in the name of jesus christ ephesians 2 as we try to see the intent and the message of the book of ephesians if you want to understand Ephesians very well, start from Romans. While Romans speaks about the story of a sinner man that comes into the kingdom of God and grows to become a mature Christian. He pictures him from a sinner man until when he's brought into the kingdom, until when he now grows into maturity by following the path of spiritual progress, beginning from the book of Romans chapter 6, 7 and 8. And also revealing to us the basis upon which our security in Christ is established. The spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that dwells in us. It means death cannot put an end to the life that we carry because that life is superior to death and that becomes the security of our spiritual life. Ephesians looks at the Christian not from the standpoint of his becoming does not see a Christian as a sinner. It's Romans that sees a Christian from when he was a sinner till when he came into the kingdom and his new identity in Christ Jesus. But Ephesians sees the Christian not as an isolated entity but part of a corporate body that has an eternal destiny. And from the standpoint of Ephesians, he sees the church eternal. And in order to give us insight into the oppression and the and ministry of the church, he now uses the metaphors, three metaphors. Sit, walk, and stand. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, we see sitting. And I need you to understand that these things came to Paul by revelation. When he went to the wilderness of Arabia, and the Bible says that he saw things that were, unspeak, that were unlawful for man to speak about. When he came out of Arabia, he began to ask the churches to pray for him so that God could grant him utterance to declare the mysteries of God that he had received. Indicative of the fact that those things that he had received in Asia, in, in Arabia, were factored into his spirit with energized language to, com to communicate. It was buried in the belly of his heart. I, if you are still here, say amen. amen. And he cried out for utterance so that he could communicate spiritual things with spiritual language unto spiritual men. It was in the days of his ministry when he wrote to the Ephesian church that utterance was granted him. And that's why when you read the book of Ephesians and you don't read it with understanding, you'll be wondering what kind of man is this and what is he saying? Well, let's open some pages in that book and get to see the, the flow in the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1, the Bible says, and you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past you walk according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the loss of the flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath. Even as others. But God who is rich in mercy. For his great love where we hid, with he loved us. When we were dead in sins as quicken us together with Christ, then in bracket verse by grace he has saved and has raised us up together and made us sit together with him 
in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Now let me just illustrate what Paul is trying to reveal to us here. If I take this Bible and I put a pen in this Bible and I travel with this Bible to Kano, where would the pen be? The Bible now speaks to us about the principle of substitution. And then by the time you move from substitution, the next principle, the next spiritual principle that we see after substitution is the principle of inclusion. In substitution, Christ takes your place. Are you with me? But inclusion, you are included in Christ. Second principle of the Spirit. Did you get me? I said in substitution, what? Christ takes your place. But in inclusion, you are put as part and parcel of Christ. You get it? Now, substitution was required so that the claims of divine justice could be satisfied. And based upon that, we became part of Christ. And in order for us to have the same destiny with Christ, we became part of Christ and we're included in Christ. So that when Christ died, we died. When Christ was resurrected, we resurrected. And when Christ was ascended to heaven, we ascended along with him. And when Christ sat down at the right hand of God, we sat there because of the principle of what? Inclusion. Did you get to that point now? All right. So if uh, it's on the strength of this scripture that we understand that our citizenship is of heaven. We are only ambassadors and pilgrims upon, this face, upon the face of the earth. That is from whence we are going to draw our reinforcement. That is from whence we are going to draw, if we are going to be accurate with our destiny which is in the heavens, we will have to be connected to heaven. And when Jesus revealed to us the threefold assignment of the church in the book of Matthew chapter 16, when he spoke about the church and revealed the purpose of the church, he made us to understand that the first thing that the church must do is that the church must be connected to heaven. If you find the people that speak about Jesus but are not connected to heaven in that territory, there's no church. Because when the church is connected to heaven, when we are connected to heaven, we can be reinforced by heaven. We can function by the resources of heaven. We can represent heaven. And we can ex extend the frontiers of the kingdom of God here on earth by the enablement that we see from heaven. That was the life that Jesus lived. He lived a life that expressed his father because he was in total connection he was in absolute connection with his father and everything he did was that which he saw his father do he was an expression of his father and a representative of his father so that if you had seen him you had seen his father and so we are seated in heaven so the seat there talks about our sitting position which is sitting in victory our calling the anointing upon your head, our destiny, and all of those things have come from the realm of resurrection, the realm of victory. It means that if you walk in your calling, which is a precursor of resurrection, you will be ahead of the devil because it's resurrection that created your calling. It's when Christ sat there that he now gave gifts to men from, resur from resurrection, from victory. If you walk in your call, you are walking in victory. If you walk in that which God has spoken to you, that's the walk in victory. The devil will come of a short of a shorty he will come but he will fall because you are operating with the template of resurrection and that is something that the devil is not modified enough to understand so do you understand sitting now that's where we are that's our reality that's our realm of reality you cannot make me believe that all i am is what i look like in the natural i know the country that i'm from i know the place that i'm from and the bible says that our names are written in heaven And we must be armed with this consciousness. It's Paul that is giving us insight. That if at any point in time you are blinded to the reality that you are seated in the heavens, then it must be that darkness has casted a spell upon you. Secondly, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> in Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the vocation where which ye are called 
with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, enduring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. You know now the emphasis has shifted from sitting, and the emphasis has now come to walking. But you see, it happens to be that in the natural, your son will sit first. Then he will stand next. And then he will walk last. But in the spiritual, you sit first. You walk next. And then you stand last. Hallelujah. 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 from that point becomes walking. And the walk, that word walk is ancient English that speaks about our behavior, our conduct, and our manner of life. He said that our manner of life, since we are citizens of heaven, but ambassadors upon the face of the earth, we are saddled with the responsibility to ensure that our life exhibits the character and the perspective of heaven here on earth. That's the only way we can be worthy ambassadors. And that's why he speaks and he calls himself by a strange title in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. He calls himself a prisoner. The true translation of that is a slave. Not a servant, but a slave. The servant has a prerogative to choose his master. He can serve this master today and serve another master tomorrow. But a slave is bound to one master for life. And in this scripture, in order for him to tell us about our work, he had to call himself a slave of God. I'm bound to God. I must express God. Only people that have that mentality can operate and walk in holiness. Because in order to do that, we must subject every manifestation of the flesh to the cross. So that our work of holiness will be evidence to all that this is a character and the value system of people from heaven. Did you get it to that point now? Go with me to Ephesians chapter 6. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, the subject matter and the metaphor shifts. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the law. <laughs> And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. In the standing posture, which corresponds to the book of Numbers, is warfare. Did you get it? <laughs> you are not fooling. You are not fooling. You are not fooling. So, uh, um, um, Exodus speaks about our sitting. The benefits that we have in Christ on the account of our redemption. And a lot of this depends on revelation. Because the day you, you find out that God has already paid the price for healing, you can as well by faith enter into that realm and begin to enjoy that, that provision. Then Leviticus tells us about our work with God and our fellowship through the blood. Our work of holiness by the cross. And then the book of Ephesians chapter 6 now reveals our warfare which is standing and he gives us the golden principle of spiritual warfare and it's very different from what I see in Mount of Fire hallelujah <laughs> the basis the platform for spiritual warfare was unveiled with very clear terms the Lord will raise warriors from among us 
by the education of the spirit you just know where the problem is coming from and you know how to address it songs of righteousness that God will cause to arise with healing in their wings he said be strong ah, I don't need to go into that scripture our time is already spent and we have solid business to do but everything about spiritual warfare is dependent on two statements mentioned here by Paul one be strong in the Lord and two be strong in the might of the Lord when we talk about being strong in the Lord we are talking about being strong in taking advantage of the accomplishments of the Lord the accomplishments of the Lord the accomplishments of the Lord the devil still wants you to view yourself as a being or a creature of the old creation he wants to bring your mind to that to that plane and if you accept to operate from that plane you have denied your standing in the spirit to accept a lie now for instance somebody that was a criminal and he gives his life to christ and he has come to the kingdom of god and god has accepted him the devil want to reveal to that man what he used to be but according to new testament theology that which he was before does not exist anymore And until this man is strong in the accomplishments of the Lord and the implication of the same upon his life, the devil will still de deceive him to believe that his past is still existing. And the devil will be able to make him a slave of that past. And so he said, be strong in the Lord. Second, he said, be strong in the power of God's might. That means the resident ability in the Holy Spirit. When he talks about the might of God, he's talking about the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That that Holy Spirit that dwells on your inside, He has promptings in your spirit. He has there's a sense of life in your spirit that you need to pay attention to. That's where you get the strategy for warfare. When the psalmist says that the Lord teacheth my finger to fight and my hands to war, He's talking about the promptings of the spirit. Know when to sit, when to stand. Know when to walk away and know when to run. By the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you will notice that in the weapons of our warfare. There are two categories of weapons. I've said it before and I say it again. There are some weapons you read in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Weapons that you take and weapons that you put on. Because there are two things he said we should be strong in. In the Lord and what? In the power of. So let me stop there on spiritual warfare. You can study the rest yourself. And know how to fight. Amen. Know how to fight. As you are praying about an issue and a scripture is dropped upon your spirit. You need to take that scripture and translate that scripture from your heart and take it to your mouth. There's a heart and mouth relationship. You cannot clap with one hand. You cannot manifest power, release power if your heart does not synchronize with your mouth. So when your heart has received the wisdom, received the strategy for battle, when you say, cause it now, oh, your mouth needs to respond, synchronize, and you release that bullet. <laughs> it means you have taken something. The Holy Spirit will crystallize it, will release it, but you must, you have the responsibility to do what? Protect. Take it. For the weapons of, of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through what? Those mere utterances are mighty weapons because they are passing through God. It's the one that allows the element of might to come upon it. So that he can break through a troop and bring down a wall. Hallelujah. Manta Boza Capetamina. We went to a crusade in the countryside. And they brought an evil report. I said, okay, we are not praying this night. You know, many times prayer can be born out of fear. You are, you are on a different airport. When you enter prayer because of fear. I assure you, you will not reap in it. I was, I was speaking to you by experience. We have tried it before. When I asked, they, ah! they will start oh, look up, look up, look up, look up. We, we did it many times. Paleta maku de maskadia. Paleta kabala shaima kadebo. You need to take it. There are several things you need to take because it crystallizes by the spirit. You see the seed of faith manifested in the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. 
the Bible says that when they had prayed, the place where they were gathered together was shaking and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Suddenly, you know, they were beaten, they were frustrated so that they would stop talking about the name of Jesus. But when they went for that prayer, they experienced a manifestation of faith so strong that they began to speak with boldness. Have you been threatened before and just went to the, the place of prayer? Because when we talk about fear, that they are thoughts. And in order for the devil to be able to get you to think that way, he allows somebody to threaten you. I will fail you. And when they say so, you know. <laughs> somebody called me the day I came. I said, oh, pastor, pastor, pastor. He didn't know that a fairy dart had put him on a thought tangent that was leading him away to terrible insecurity. Are you still with me? Something terrible will happen and then the devil now brings a fairy dart. But in the place of prayer, the shield of faith can crystallize. And then you now begin to see a boldness that comes to counteract the act of darkness. It happens to me many times. When they sent us out to the field and then our AGM began to call, he put his girlfriend as a leader of our zone. She will call you 2 a.m. and say, go to Lafia. <laughs> go to Lafia. And if you dare not go, all of us on the field are afraid, like dying men. I began to grow lean. Me, I didn't have flesh before. Then, now I'm growing lean. lean. And one day I took it to God in prayer. And the Lord now spoke to me and said, Who gave you this job in the first place? Hey, then I found out that God spoke about the job before I got it. So if there's anybody for me to fear, it's God. I repented. I repented about my, my, the darkness I allowed to, to tint my soul. And I shouted. That shout I shouted was just because I, I revolted against the status quo. Then she called. I said, go to live here. I said, okay, I'm waiting for the Hilux van for 10,000 Naira DTA for insurance policy just in case I have accident on the road. Then she stopped calling me. <laughs> Say woe to the devil. If you know how to use those weapons, you can bring down a strong man. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's why you understand now why you have to sit first, then how to walk. Because your standing and walking are connected. Your sitting and walking are connected. If you have not sat well, you can't walk well. If you have not walked well, you can't stand well. Mm, because the Bible says, having the readiness to revenge every disobedience when your obedience is complete when your walking is accurate then you can revenge you can fight and the devil will not be able to find any stronghold any food for the prince of this world comet he found nothing in me my work was accurate so he could not peg anything he could not hold anything i was like an invincible warrior that appears in the night and slays remove the teeth of the witches and there's nobody to slay me you can be impossible if your work is good a fight can be terrible. Let me stop there. Let me stop there. Let me stop there. So you have seen it now that all these things are the same thing. Alright. Now let's go here. Because we are still here trying to transit from here to here. And it's now revealing to us that when you come and give, make a vow to God, that vow has a value in, in the sanctuary. Alright. The value of that vow is the Determined by how relevant your life is with the next subject, battle. Somebody has given his life to Christ and he has come and vowed to God, I will follow you. But the value of his offering, of his self, is directly proportional to his capacity for what? For battle. That's the basis of classification in the sanctuary. Now so, that's why the bracket from 20 to 60 for men is 50 and women is 30. This is the highest bracket. Do you get it? Because of that factor. From 5 to 20, this is what we have. 1 to 5, this is what you have. 60 and above, this is what you have. 
this the highest because of the next item on the agenda which is battle warfare now we need to synchronize this our list by new testament theology are you still with me now we need to put a code a shade a color on this table with new testament theology not to, to soak it inside the new testament and see if some changes will be effective according to the book of galatians chapter 3 verse 18 the bible reveals to all you don't need to open don't worry we're almost done see where i'm going um this is my passage to joel 2 it's only one verse i want to share this night but this road now is the way to this verse now. <laughs> that's why i say we should do this one for morning session but don't worry this is the way god wants it in galatians chapter 3 verse 18 but the bible reveals that in this covenant there's no male and there's no female that makes this category this table this column null and void so we can cancel this table hey this one has suffered loss so now see what you see without this table all right and then there's 60 and above and the tragedy of the old testament is that a warrior will come to a time in his life where his strength will fail him and david went out for war as other times and when his, the blade of his sword clashed with a giant from the Philistine camp and they saw the impact of David's hand ah! they said no you will not come with us for battle again <laughs> lest the light of Israel will be snuffed out it's a tragedy but in the New Testament we see the overcoming spirit that was that which was exhibited by Caleb. At the age of 80, he was still strong as when he was 40. Caleb is a portrait in the Old Testament of an overcomer. And that's what, that's the dynasty and destiny that we share in Christ Jesus. For the Bible says, though our outward man perish, our inward man, that is in spiritual warfare, we become even better by experience. It's renewed day by day. So this column here has to go. There are only three categories left. We just gave it a New Testament outlook. Amen. Now, with this New Testament perspective, you can understand the book of John, chapter 2, from 12 to 13. I speak unto you, children. Can you identify it there? I speak unto you, young men. Can you identify it there? I speak unto you, fathers. Go there. Go there. Let's see it now. That's why I said we'll do some mathematics. And after the mathematics, then we'll see the revelation. Who is there with me? The book of 1 John chapter 2. The prophet addressed three categories of people. Lava seminar. Ah, you see, time is not our friend. Time is not our friend. In the book of First John 2, verse 12, it says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. Now, this is what we are going to do in this class. A category of people will give us, because he spoke about young men, children two times, young men two times, fathers two times. So we are going to bring the testimony of children, the two testimonies together, and then try to understand it. He said that children are what? People that have a consciousness of the fact that their sins have been forgiven because of God. It's at the expense of God. Hallelujah. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. Hmm. Are you seeing the revelation there? Yes. Ah, okay. Let me leave that one now. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked man, the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. These little children have the revelation of God as Father. Yes. 
And so whenever they have any need, they just turn to the father. And notice that the perspective of the children is self-centered. Check it very well. Me centered. Me. Were you here in the morning session when we did one? A threefold, a nine-item threefold list. You still remember it? So the children operate from that first place. They became saved at the father's expense. And any need that they sense, they turn that need to the father. That's a plain, a level of existence in the Christian faith. And it happens to be that the sanctuary rating for that level is five shekels. And 70% of Christians today have that value. That's what I've been trying to make you understand this morning. I needed to use mathematics, Bible maths, for the eyes of men to be open. This is the level of effectiveness of the average Christian today. Because he believes that God is working for him. God has, has not delivered on the marriage agreement. It's not delivered on the vehicle agreement. It has not come. Five shekels. Ours is a generation of five shekels. Five shekels. Five shekels. Meanwhile, the rating is to the extent to which we can be relevant in battle. I write unto you, young men. Let's see, young men. Young men, what's the first thing that they did? I can't find it. You have overcome the wicked one. Second thing that they did, because you are strong and the word of God abided in you. So the true story of the young men is that they have started doing business in great waters. And they have come to a point where they can apply the word of God in their daily life. They can engage the devil in spiritual warfare and all of that. Hallelujah. Now let us try to see the category of the fathers. If we know that the situation of the Old Testament does not find place here. Fathers. The thing about the fathers is that they have been able to see the eternal purpose of God that begins from eternity before the foundation of the world. And they have come to realize that if the devil could not stop the plan that God had in his heart, then in eternity past, he will not destroy it now in time. See, because of that revelation, the way they fight is different. <laughs> Our fighting is dependent on where you are launching from. That young man is still fighting. He's still fighting a fresh battle. But this guy is fighting from a place where the plans of God have been set up concerning him. He's fighting from victory. He has that knowledge of him that is from where the beginning. And the devil was not there that time. Fifty shekels. Except the Lord takes us to see that which was upon the heart of God. Before you were made manifest here in time, you may never be strong. Because that, God does not launch, seeking to accomplish a purpose. He launches from an established cancer. It's already done in him before he starts set out to perform it. Do you understand it? He is not trying to accomplish something. He is launching from a settled purpose. And the ancient in God had discovered that every time God spoke, it came to pass. Every time God declared, it came to pass. So, he, you know, okay, even my destiny had been written before I was born. So the devil cannot interrupt it. As long as I'm in alliance with God, I will live to walk in every detail of my destiny. The devil is irrespective. So he operates that way. How many people are living to fulfill the script, to live out the script that is written concerning them? Many of us have been lowered, depraved, and 
and we only see what God can give us. And the value that we have in the spirit is five shekels. 70% of Nigerian Christians, 80% of East African Christians, 90% of, of South African Christians are in this category. I could not, the statistics, I couldn't work it out in U.S., but it's a very terrible figure. That in all the earth is the South African church that is the most backsliding, followed by the American. And many people look at Nigeria as a place that revival has been sustained for a long time. But if what we have has this sanctuary written, then there is an attack on the house. And you are the one and I am the one that will stand together in this generation to change our rating. Surprisingly. When Joel spoke about the outpouring of the Spirit in the book of Joel chapter 2, turn your Bible quickly. That's the last verse for the night. Tale sula mahabrante kaskobelehe. Buria fasala. Where is Brother Tena? I hope you are not uh, filming. Okay. Strike the chord for us. Don't worry. We'll give you the remaining notes at home. you write at home. You know, it's good for us to prepare to give God an offering. An offering of worship. Prepare for it. Bring the guitar out. <laughs> oh, we have drum tonight. Jesus. Who was giving us the, the sound to maintain the rhythm? Don't touch wire again, oh. Don't touch wire. Hallelujah. Who is the drummer? I've seen it before in the visions of my head. How that people that have been garnished by God, trained by God from Nigeria, will go out to the nations of the earth and evangelize it. They will present the true God, the everlasting God, the God of all power and the God of all grace. And from any form of degradation and de depravity that has hit the nations of the earth, the gospel, the balanced gospel of the kingdom that will be exported out of our boundaries will bring every other God of the nations down. Joel chapter 2. And I will sing of the mercies of the Lord with my mouth shall I make it known from the rising of the sun and until it's going down I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. And with my mouth shall I make it known from the rising of the sun. And until it's going down, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will sing, I will sing. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. With my mouth will I make no From the rising of the sun I yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the mercies of the Lord Singing I will sing I will, I will, I will sing Of the mercies of Oh, na, 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 na With my mouth Shall I Make it no ah, 
Oh, na 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 na. I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. And with my mouth shall I make it known from the rising of the sun and until it's going down. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. <laughs> tale, 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 malatakwa. Silent and broken, the jagin hasali. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing, singing, I will sing, I will sing, oh God, in my mouth, shall I make it low, oh na 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 na, shabara bedam rata da bakusa maneta, Aye na na manda gasema, oh bara da bida skeda. Sing with mama, do it mama. Shall I make it through from the rising of the sun and until it's going down? I will sing, I will sing, I will sing. Sing, I will sing, I will sing it. Say, na 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 na. Tole la ba, ay 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 da da. Oh, I will sing the mercy. Sing it, I will sing, I will sing, I will sing, I will sing. Yeah, na na, yeah, na na. From the rising, from the rising, I will sing of the mercies of. Sing it out, Sole Mama Na, Sole Mama Na. Oh, from the rising sun, Sole Mama Na Na Na, Sole Mama Na 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 Muska. Sing it, I will sing, I will sing, I will sing. Hey, with my mouth, shall I make it known from the rising, from the rising, rising of the sun. Rona, it is going down. Shena managana. Sing it, I will sing it. Hey, oh, ah, from the rising of the sun, rising of the sun, rising of the sun, rising of the sun. Sing it out. 
God, I'll serve to you. I will see all the mercies of the Lord. Yeah, I will sing to you. Shall I make it known? From the rising of the sun. I will sing, 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 I Shall I 
You are greater than what people say. Yahweh. 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 You are greater than what people say. Yahweh. 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 You are better than what people say. Yahweh. 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 You are better than what people say. Yahweh. Yahweh. You 
you are bigger than what people say. Yahweh, Mantala Babo. Yahweh, Yahweh. You are bigger than what people say. All right. In Jesus' name. God is going to pass through this hall right now. And like I see in the vision, He's going to be dropping things on people. Dropping things on people. Dropping things. He'll be dropping things on the lives of men. We give you glory. We thank you. We magnify. In Jesus' name. I want to carry out the last instruction the Lord gave me. Then I will hand over to another minister to bring us into another day. Jala taba kupes kambra halat rabos kalebades alis kabranta babor sharebalonda mas kanda babaha la trateto boske la trateta boli mas kande mamoria rafes kabrenga batabas kebra halata lefro salabante bas kabena. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Now, increase the volume of the strings, your keyboard on strings. Just expect the Lord. He, he said, I shall allow him to pass through the crowd. So I want to prepare for him. I'm not hearing the sound. And I know the Lord can hear it also. Give him volume. Give him sound. I want him to, as he comes, let him be glorified. I can't hear the sound. I can't hear the sound. I can't hear him. The keyboard sound. Patebonde. It's going to be like a river. He will walk through this auditorium. Kabuske. Parse Kaburia. La prenda manga pata. Kabeski feti. La horima ampota moalpade. Oh my. Shabalanda baboria. Shabalanda. Expect to step higher in your calling. Expect to step higher in your ministry. Expect to step higher. Shalemando. Sabalaba Palazila Ambria Fasakidaba. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Please, so that you will not be distracted, just close your eyes. As I ask him to walk through the hall. Lord, right now, right now, right now, walk in the midst of your people. 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 Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Oh my God, he's coming, 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 he's coming. Power! Please bring them for me. Walk in the midst of your people. Walk in the midst of your people. Yes, yes, yes. Put something upon the hand of that lady, Lord. Put something upon her hand. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Upon her hand. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus. He's walking, he's walking. He's walking. Put something upon her hand. 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 Sebriya kapanane. Zafreta bonde malahata. He's going to walk in this hall. Baile na mando. Baka selina. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Let somebody catch this fire, this fire on my hand now. Let somebody catch this fire, catch this fire, catch this fire, catch this fire. Send him an ask, Shalemando Skebrabo Rabadai Aige Aige Malana Malana Debo Malana 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 Somebody will hear a voice It's going to be audible It's going to be audible It's going to be audible right now Right now Right now Yes Shana no man de Bragadai Siya Debo Scabregate la manane, Scabregate la bakudia, Skyla mesalima kazi. Let the rain of your glory cover us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom. Pray in us Let the way Of your glory Let the way Of your glory And let the way Of your glory Of your life Let the light let the truth of your kingdom reign in us. Let the way of your glory Let the way of your glory Aha! They ride down the white horse. Come, great one. Come, great one. Sabine Gabro Sakuha. Palaisa Lembra Capetalia. This is your time. This is your hour. 
Sembra capitale mascalima. Sibra mande bocoria macascalia. Tela bobo salema. Tela anima cute branda baboni. Scabrenda baboria malahase. Esco vri baranta bagada la baga pesca bregada. Zelia makate boga basuala. Pailama, 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 pailama. Scabregada kuska bela. Sandaleba kwada bakata Shaminanta Shaminanta Shamina gabates kobria vazane Skobere la bera kadeli abatakwa Lebros kamelia Kaiba tama kaila bastama Yes it is your time oh god Selena, Selena, Selena. The Lord wants to drop something in somebody's hands. Can you just stretch just your right hand forward? Right hand. He'll put something inside. Oh God. <laughs> Where's that brother? That brother that put something in my hand, where is he? Come. I strengthen you with the corn and with the wine. With the increase of the field and with the oil that comes from the rock. By that which I have with God, I say go and prosper. It will come upon that hand. Just play your keyboard and he will put it. Just play anything. Play anything now. He will put it on that hand. Telima! Post Kelaman Dobria. Ah, there is a brother. He's operating that hand and putting fire inside. Say by this shall be a sign done to thee. The sick shall be healed by your hand. Tabale Sanda. Thank you.
Ancient of days, we thank you. We worship you. We give you praise. We give you praise. The Lord is walking in the midst of his people. The anointing of healing is here. The Lord has descended with his healing. He has descended with his healing. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Here with healing, I want to touch some people this evening with healing. Jesus. If you are having a problem with your eyes, just Raise up your hand wherever you are. Have a problem with your eyes. I see the Lord anointed touching the eyes of somebody. You just come forward. Come forward. Let's pray for you. The Lord is here. is here to heal you. I see your healing in vision. I see the Lord touching your eyes in vision. 
and vision does not fail because it's something that is permanent in the spirit Jesus Jesus Just pray, pray. Thank the Lord for healing you. Thank the Lord for touching your eyes. Just thank Him for touching your eyes. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is touching your eyes. Yes, Lord, touch these ones, O oh God. Let every default disappear. Let it disappear now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Please come and pray with these people. It's a concluded issue in the spirit. God will touch their eyes, and every defect will disappear. And from tonight, they begin to see clearly. And these eyes will not trouble them anymore. Shall we pray? Jesus. Jesus. After this prayer, just exercise the eyes. You are not you are the type that does not read. Go and read with these eyes, and you will see clearly. Jesus. You have been prayed for just go go and exercise the eyes Jesus. to pray for just three people. What I saw is this. I saw them stretch forth their right leg. An anointing was 
pour upon the leg. In your office, if you have a very critical issue, and you have been praying, just comfort. Comfort. You have been praying seriously. Comfort. The Lord is going to break that yoke. Oh, yes. As a student, you have been dragged back by a particular cause. This cause has been a threatening to you. And any time you remember it, it gives you fear. <clears throat> when you will begin to even think, let this cause not make me. Let it not be that this cause will make me not to graduate with my mate. Just come forward. The Lord is going to break that yoke. Come forward. That fear, anytime you remember, you will quick fear. I know what I'm talking about. Jesus. Guys, this, in the category of the student, I want you to come this way.
Jesus. Thank you, Father. The, the, the thought said uh, this, uh, they fall into category of people you there is particular dream that you always have <laughs> and anytime this dream come your way it gives you depression. You'll be depressed. You'll be depressed. You'll be depressed. Anytime this dream come your way, you'll be depressed. You'll be fighting this. The Lord has decided to descend to set you free. Let's worship God. Worship the Lord tonight. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. Glorious God. Emmanuel and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel, when you come to reign. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Jesus. The anointing of the Lord is present now. The anointing of Jesus is present to break this yoke. Just thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for delivering you. Thank the Lord for setting you free. For breaking you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. A shant of days, we thank you. 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 We glorify your name. set you free from this dream that causes depression. Save your deliverance in the name of Jesus. You are free. Either the Son of Man set free is free indeed. So shall the reason of the anointing in Jesus name you are set free see the deliverance of God so in Jesus name Every cloud that covers you, even from the place of work, I break that cloud. Off! In Jesus' name. So shall it be. You leave this place victorious. You will get to the office and every cloud will disappear. So shall it be. Amen. Lord Jesus. You are free. Joy will fill your heart. You will be happy walking. No one will victimize you in the place of work. No one will threaten you in Jesus. And you be lifted in Jesus' name. You have freedom, and every fear is disappear. And the wisdom of the Lord will rest upon you. And from this day, you will rejoice and bless God, because He has overcome for you.
Yes, Lord. The Bible says, He that is above is above them all. Yes, you are above every cause that stand a threat to worship. I break that threat today. I destroy that threat today. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Go in the liberty that the Lord has given to you. Go in the liberty that God has given to you by the strength and the greatness of Christ. Every dark part, let them be made light. That every darkness before your parts, let light shine in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We worship your name for your word that has come forth tonight. Thank you because you have Google opened the eyes of our of our understanding. Lord, you have lifted our spirit. Lord, you have caused us to see it in heavenly places far above principalities and power be thou exalted O God Lord be thou glorified Lord be thou worship just like you say unto O God Elijah arise and eat for the journey is far Lord we know that this menu you give to us this day will last for years. Lord, we, oh God, keep us in this pathway even throughout the days of our life. Strengthen us, oh God. Release your grace upon us. Your servant whom you have used, oh God, virtue indeed has gone out from him. Lord, replenish him. Fill him more with your spirit. Fill him more with your power. Fill him more with your strength. That he will stand more as your oracle to declare your counsel. Do it, O God of heaven. Thank you, blessed Father. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 If you have been blessed, appreciate God the more. Hallelujah. First of all, my sincere appreciation and thanks goes to God Almighty, the King of Kings, my maker and my creator, the one who saw the cravings of my heart and the hearts of a few others, other members of the fellowship and saw that uh, there were a lot of things we desired to do a lot of things we felt could advance the kingdom of God, but which we lacked the platform to do. And seeing that state of heart, he rose us up into position of leadership, even when we were most unqualified. My gratitude goes to him, my king and my maker. Thank you. And secondly, to the man of God, Apostola Romeo Sai, all the way from Lagos, a great sacrifice. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know quite a, 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 a large number of the executive arm of the fellowship have not been exposed to his ministry. But I kept telling them when I, when, when, before he came that this is a man I have, I have tasted of his ministry. And right from that time, my life has not been the same. A man that I know that is absolutely devoid of greed. I'm not saying this because he's here. God sees my heart. And I respect the grace of God and the anointing upon his life. Thank you very much, sir. We've been blessed by your ministry. God bless you. And Esco told, uh, a member told me in the, in the morning that why don't I allow him to preach till night? I said, ah, no. <laughs> we have sessions for that one of these days where we can just come and 
charge through from the morning to the evening. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. And the, the wife of the servant of God is also in the house. We really appreciate you, Ma. Thank you for finding out time to be with us. God bless you. And I also have fathers in the house. I don't even know how to introduce them. I don't know where to start on people who have been instrumental and have been key players in this to see that this program came to a, a reality. We have the person of Prophet Jangfa. He has been very, very, very instrumental right from last year. Thank you very much. God bless you, sir. Apostle Adejo has been there from day one. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate you. Prophet Ezekiel, thank you very much, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I don't know the name. Thank you, the Prophet from Kano. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, I can see a lot of people. I can't begin to mention names, but thank you very, very, very much. God bless you. Brother Tina, Brother Boniface, everybody, cars and everybody, just everybody. Thank you very much. We appreciate the grace of God upon your life. Thank you for finding out time to be with us. God bless you in Jesus' name. So please, if you are, in case you are here with an offering, while the offering ba the basket goes around, you can just drop your offering in the offering basket if you came with one. And uh, the, there are tips that the man of God brought all the way from Lagos tapes of, of the messages he has preached in the past and which we can be a blessing, which can be a blessing to us. So if you feel you need some of them there with the, at the close of service they will be displayed on the bench there. You can just pick some of them at a giveaway price I tell you. We have MP3s that some of them have as much as 8, 7, 10 messages in them and it's just for a cheap price. So you buy the truth don't borrow it and sell it not. And also, we have a, a, an album by our brother, Brother Boniface. He's a minstrel also, and he came along with a few copies of his album. You can as well purchase some, and you'll be blessed by them in Jesus' name. Okay, so lastly, uh, I'm, I've been making this announcement since yesterday because I know that quite a number of us here are RC members. And the scholarship exam that was written on Thursday, the particulars you submitted are not complete and without that your uh, exam will be disqualified so please on sunday when coming tomorrow for service come along with the photocopy of your id card and your admission letter so that your papers can be attended to if not it's as though you did not seek for that scholarship exam so please for those of us who are here who wrote that exam and know some people who wrote and are not here just help disseminate the information and also lastly all escorts should just wait by that corner at the close of this meeting so that can have a brief, a brief, brief, brief chance. Hallelujah. Can we rise up on our feet before I call one of the men of God to close the service? I just appreciate God in our only two way. Father, we bless your holy name. You alone are the doer of all these things. All the glory, all the adoration returns to you.